Hello, warm welcome here on Star Sports 2, highlights of the opening game of the Wills World Cup of Cricket. Uh, 35 matches in all to be played, uh, 12 teams of course taking part, and uh, the opening game from Group B, England against New Zealand. The other teams in Group B, uh, South Africa, Pakistan, they're expected to qualify, and uh, the whipping boys expected to be the Netherlands and the United Arab Emirates. England, New Zealand, both teams struggling to find a bit of form. These are the team lineups uh, going into the match. Captain for England, uh, Michael Atherton, decided uh, not to go with uh, Philip de Freitas. Uh, Robin Smith has uh, not uh, recovered from injury, but although he's not going home, so he's expected to play in a couple of games' time. Uh, Neil Fairbrother, the uh, one-day specialist, is fit. There was injury doubts over him. He's fit and plays. As far as the New Zealand lineup concerned, Captain there, Lee German, well, he'll be looking to the likes of Chris Cairns to uh, anchor the batting. And uh, Danny Morrison is their speedster with Shane Thompson, the uh, key spinner for New Zealand. Uh, of course, uh, as I said, both teams are struggling to find a little bit of form. New Zealand may have something of an advantage going into this. Having just toured India, they went down 2-3 in the series there, but drew two all with Pakistan. And of course, England went to South Africa and got absolutely hammered. 1-6, uh, they lost that one. But it's a very early start in uh, Ahmedabad, in the western state of Gujarat. Nine o'clock start, a little bit of dew on the ground. Mike Atherton won the toss and had no hesitation in putting New Zealand into bat. And uh, an interesting uh, opening pair for New Zealand, a very exciting pair. Uh, Nathan Assel and Craig Spearman were the openers. And uh, taking the new ball for England was uh, Dominic Cork. So there it is. He's only played eight matches, so not much experience and no huge scores there, just 23 years of age. Very interesting to see how he goes here. I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays. He gets him uh, in a hurry, he does. And this is the first ball of the World Cup. Here we go, Dominic Cork. Just a little bit of swing there and uh, left to go through to the keeper. Well. A little buzz in the ground as that first ball was bowled. This is exciting stuff, Jeffrey. Yeah, you always get that. I mean, for any opening ball or opening batsman, it's a bit nerve-wracking to start with. But I don't think there'll be much bounce in the pitch. I think you'll be able to get on the front foot. Uh, it's very dry. I know it's been used a few times, but they just roll the pitch, water it, roll it again in India. Oh, a little bit of bounce that time, and wide signalled. So New Zealand off the mark. Seems to me that uh, they've got a bit of crowd support here as well. Yeah, this is probably a delivery that hits those grassy areas. That's why I said on the pitch report it could be a bit too paced. That's in the air, good shot, it's way over the top, going down to the fence. Quite a hard outfield, Atherton's chasing it. Will they come back to the third? Well, that's what we've come to expect of these two openers. That's the first big hit, New Zealand six without loss. So, six without loss. One lusty shot down the ground so far. Got him! Oh, he's dropped him! Well, he hit the outside edge and that's gone in the air. Sliced it the right hand side. Thorpe really should have been taken. That's an unfortunate start for England in terms of catches. Yeah, good ball this. It just caught the batsman in two minds. He's first of all going to play defensive and then he just pushed at it at the last minute. Just pushed a little bit there. That got it to carry to slip and down it went. Spearman on strike. Got him, dropped him again, I can't believe this. What is going on there, Fiery? Another one to slip, another one down. England are making it tough for themselves. They've got to get a wicket here quickly. Well, that was an absolute cuckoo, wasn't it? It's a little drive, it just lollipopped the first slip. He could have caught it with one hand. That's the sort of uh, thing that you're looking for as an opening bowler. Batsman trying to score off you when the ball's swinging. Got him beautifully taken. Caught and bowled. A magnificent catch. 
That was very, very well taken. It was hit back to him very firmly, and Dominic Cork has struck for England. Well, there's the wicket that he's going to have. I didn't think it was such a good shot, really. He never went through with it, got caught in two minds. In the end, it finished up. A little bit of a firm push. He was going to drive it, then he just pushed it, and he didn't really do anything with it in the end. It didn't go back that quick. It's still a good catch, because when you're following through as a bowler, you catch it one-handed, it's a pretty good performance. So, caught and ball caught, Craig Spearman out for five. New Zealand, 12 for one. Stephen Fleming, stylish left-hand batsman, is the new batsman. And uh, those are his figures. Hasn't scored 100 yet. Eight half centuries, though. Oh, good shot, straight down the ground for four. What a great start for Fleming. Simply leaning into that one, playing dead straight as uh, Jeff Boyd got a suggest that he should do. And uh, what's more, he timed it well. Now, this is a top shot. Lovely follow through. Crisply hit, didn't try to hit it too hard. Just played a perfect straight drive. Down the wicket he goes, at six, that's a magnificent shot. All the way into the crowd. Watch that white ball fly. Have a look at the sixes amongst the crowd. That's gone back 20 rows. Yeah, he caught Peter Martin unprepared for that. It was a surprise. Very nimble and quick on his feet. It's a good-looking shot. Chase for Thorpe, that's beaten him. Four runs. A high percentage of Nathan Astle's runs are likely to come in boundaries. And we've already seen him dispatch one over the boundary for six. shot through the offside Craig White's chasing but he won't get anywhere near it that's beaten him to the fence by 20 meters if you give Nathan Astle any room anything that's short or wide or too full he's going to be a very punishing player and take advantage of that it's a lovely shot over square leg four runs too short from Goff well, Nathan Astle again has improvised here well, the ball just might have been just a little bit short of a length, but not a lot of foot movement by Nathan Astle here, and really he's just flicked it. And through the offside for four. Illingworth can't stop the stem of runs. It's gone fine, and it'll be four runs. 64 for one, or 15 overs. Darren Goff again, right arm over the wicket. He's whacked that one, that could be six, it's over the top again, you beauty, lovely straight hit down the ground, Ian Smith's out of his seat, lovely shot. Well, it's brilliant stuff, Tony, the New Zealanders have really set this World Cup alive. Well pitched up, you don't pitch him up to him, he smashed that one away, this is a quick outfield, Atherton won't get there, it's four. New Zealand are playing beautifully, they've settled into this World Cup and they're on their way. Well as he's chasing this Mike Atherton, he's probably thinking, yes Graham Thorpe, you let me down with those two drop catches, Nathan Ash was one of them, that was his 50, and what a magnificent way to bring it up. The timing is superb, slowish pitch, that's his third 50 in one day international cricket. and it's going away down to the fence for four. I think it was off the bottom edge. It's gone all the way to the fence. We'll keep an eye on the umpire here. Yes, it's four. Just a little groan from Jack Russell, the wicketkeeper, as this goes past him. I think he thought he was in for a chance there. Well, we nick on something there. Oh, we're bold. So, that's the first indication of quite a lot of turn. This will go to the fence. Four buys, I reckon. Did it flick the pad? No. All the way through, four buys. Now, New Zealand will be interested in this. This ball did turn. It's a good sign for later in the day. And Jack Russell, he's been caught unaware here as well. Catch it! In the air! Oh, I don't believe it! 
This is unbelievable, England. The captain this time has dropped the lollipop. Well, if there's any finger pointing to be done later in the day, then Michael Atherton's going to have to point one back at himself. And this one should have been taken, Tony. It's an orthodox catch to short mid-wicket. That's in the air. This could be out. Will he catch it? Won't he catch it? He's got him. Yes, they've caught one. A minor miracle. They've put three down. And Thorpe, Thorpe is the man who scored it, having dropped two. Thorpe has caught one at last. So that'll relieve the pressure for England. New Zealand have lost their second wicket. There'll be no happier man on the ground than uh, Graham Thorpe to hold on to one finally. Gone very wide again, Graham Hick. A sweep shot again, but this time he didn't roll a wrist, didn't get over it, lifted it down to Thorpe. Very comfortable catch in the end. I'm sure there was a few butterflies as it came down, but he took it safely. Fleming has gone for 28. New Zealand 108 for two. Runs per 100 balls. He hasn't made a century yet. Yet that's his average and uh, he's played in three matches so far and he's out there because of this catch watch his hands here i reckon uh, he was very tense out in the deep it was uh, thorpe the ball comes down you watch him take this one got him oh that was a relief nicely played by astle once again oh he's dived over the top of it and that'll go out to the fence for four Well, he gave it the Harbour Bridge, didn't he? Clean over the top. It's in the air. Thorpe waits. And he gets it. So that's the end of Roger Twos. England have another one. Well, I think this was a mistake in thinking. He'd made up his mind to sweep wherever the ball was pitched. And in the end, it was a pretty simple catch, made look a bit awkward by Graham Thorpe. 17 for twos, New Zealand 141 for three. New man in for New Zealand is Chris Cairns. Well, from a match perspective, this may be the key point. This man here, Chris Cairns. If he gets going, if he can get in and get started, he's a very strong, powerful hitter of the cricket ball. a big hit straight back over the bowler's head that's another six magnificent cricket stroke well it hasn't taken that long for chris cairns to get into the action he's been struggling with a calf injury he didn't show any signs of this look at the movement of the feet we've seen graham hick before down the wicket a little shuffle and straight down the ground magnificent shot over mid off mid-wicket chase for Thorpe he's not going to get there 164 for three correct by Cairns that'll go all the way four more shot was that and he's got himself out Cairns goes pretty soft dismissal really and New Zealand lose their fourth wicket Cairns goes for 36 New Zealand 196 for four Chris Harris, the new batsman for New Zealand with the loss of Chris Cairns, so another Canterbury player coming in. Chris Harris, such a big part of New Zealand's effort at the last World Cup. Martin, three overs for 25. And one of the players to get into him is still there, Nathan Astle, who's on 99. There it is, the first century of the World Cup for Nathan Astle.
should be cut off, not run, in fact. That's a boundary for Chris Harris. Beautifully timed. And up comes the 200. Lester charging, and he's gone. So another New Zealander goes, and Astle's long innings is over. And he's gone for 101. It's now 204 for five. Shane Thompson, the new batsman for New Zealand, out there with the dismissal of Nathan Astle. And Shane Thompson, an experienced player, and a handyman to have coming in at this stage of the innings. He can give it a good hit. So just two dot balls at the side of the far. This is the last ball of the other. And nicely placed. Fair brother after it. Back they come for the second. This will be close. Has he got him? Yes, I think he has. He's having a look at it. This is a replay. The Sri Lankan umpire out there calling for the replay. I think that must have been very close. It was a good throw right over the bales, dragged down onto the stumps. Was he home or not? Let's have a look. And it was certainly a big dive by Chris Harris to try and make his ground. He just pushed the ball onto the onside there, into mid-wicket. Certainly get an easy single. And as he goes for the second, it's a very good return. Did he make it? Well, I'd say he's home. Well, despairing dive. It's a good one, I think. Said like a good New Zealander this. I want to see this again. Hang on. Let's have a look. I think he might be gone. I think that's out. It's all over. What a good throw that was. Right over the bales. And he's out by an inch and a half. The New Zealand captain, Lee Jamon, is out there now. The big question is, can he play a captain's knot? Good striker of the ball. And um, that's exactly what's required. 212 for six. And uh, that says it all. Yep. Off the inside edge and over the top of the outstretched left hand. This England side will not be very proud of their performance in the field. That one's just cut off. It's nicely cut off by uh, the boot of Thorpe down on the boundary. But really, they shouldn't have got one. Just talking about the fielding, yes, it has been a real mixed bag by them today, but the question is whether they've done enough with the ball, particularly that man, Richard Illingworth, well, beautifully for England today. And the man there, just close, They're inside the circle there at fine leg, well, he's gone right over the top of it, really. And so the man at deep backward square on the boundary didn't have a chance of cutting that off. Well, he's got that one in the air, but it's going into the gap, won't reach the fence, bouncing away for four, that is well placed decided to get underneath it and he had to hit it right in between the two fieldsmen so that four takes the score on to 227 outside off stump and he's picked him up i thought he took that on the half volley atherton's came in the catch well interesting one my immediate reaction there was half volley don't believe atherton would ever throw it up if it didn't hit the ground the uh, batsman well, Atherton having a little go at the batsman there and vice versa. He's got every right to ask uh, the umpires what they think. Let's have a look. Now, this will be very interesting. Uh, saying not out. The England players are protesting. Here it goes. In the air. Watch it. Well, it may just have carried. In fact, very often batsmen get given the benefit of the doubt here. I think that was probably out. No doubt as far as Atherton was concerned. It was very low, though. The umpires really had no option. Well, Dice in the air, got him. That's it. Oh, he's dropped it. I can't believe it. England's fielding has been atrocious. Their catching has been worse. Well, it must be catch number four that's definitely gone down that I've noticed. Maybe even a little more than that. Full pitch delivery. Try to get up in the block hole. So 239 for six with one ball to go. Six or four, Tony. Six. Two. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the batsman, Thompson, he's got to have a real fling at it, that's for sure. Got to get bat on ball. And that is well bowled, a slower delivery, held back by Goff. And uh, that was well, very well bowled. So that's the end of the innings. And uh, the New Zealand as well, they'll be just a little bit disappointed that they didn't kick on to 260-odd. But having said that, I think at the start of the match, if you'd have said to New Zealand, 240-odd, would you settle for that? I think they probably would have done.
So 239 the total for New Zealand, 240 the target then for England. At one stage it looked as though they might be chasing even more than that, 255, 260 at one stage looking possible. Brilliant uh, performance from Nathan Astle, 101 in the uh, first innings of this World's World Cricket Cup. And he is uh, our first Vimmel Master Blaster. Now this is a series that we should be running throughout the tournament and that we should be picking out one particular impressive performance from uh, each innings and that's sponsored by Vimmel so Nathan Assel is our first Vimmel Master Blaster One lucky shot down the ground So I look at the New Zealand card this backbone of the innings 101 with help from Fleming, a 28, uh, twos uh, looked as though he might be getting going, went out for 17. Uh, Chris Cairns, disappointingly for New Zealand, went for only 36. And uh, not too much of a wag in the New Zealand tail. Illingworth, probably the pick of the England bowlers, uh, one for 31 off 10, the most economical. Two wickets for Graham Hick. And uh, Dominic Cork looked impressive at the top of the innings. So how about uh, England's reply? 240 the target, as I mentioned, uh, the openers uh, for England, Alex Stewart and Mike Atherton. We'll be able to see how they got on when we come back after this break. And straight away, England underway. Off the hip, down to fine leg and Nash into play. So that brings Alex Stewart, the more aggressive of the two openers, under strike. And what can we, what can we expect then, Jeff, from uh, an English point of view? We saw the New Zealand approach, which was very much an all-out aggressive approach with the two players, Astle and Spearman. Stewart the dasher and Atherton the pace? Yeah, usually uh, Alex Stewart is the one that looks to, to get after the ball and he stays on the back foot a lot actually. Well, there's that outswing you're talking about from Danny Morrison. That's his trademark, getting the ball to leave the right-hander. Stands out in the middle. I'm not sure what's going on here myself, Jeff, but it looked as if he was bowled to me, leg stump. Well, he has gone out. We've had the reason why he is staying out there. Of course, he's going to have to run for Graham Hick. We talked about that earlier in the over. But uh, Michael Atherton is gone. Magnificent Yorker from Dion Nash and England are one for one. Better shot, a brilliant piece of fielding at point. Gavin Larson, well, he's the oldest on the side, Jeff. That's not a bad standard from the old boy. No, he's not afraid to get his trousers dirty. I think we'd have waved that by in my day. Four runs, lovely stop. Left hand. It's a beautiful shot from Hick. It's eased it through the covers and that'll run away. Will it for the first boundary of the innings? Yes, it does. Well, it's a good shot, but I still think he's right, Danny Morrison, to pitch the ball up. He obviously won't want to get driven for fours, but he's better pitching it up, hoping the ball swings and giving the slip and wicketkeeper a chance. Put their full card and see what's to follow. Graham Thorpe, we need to find his exponent. Jack Russell listed there to come at six. Yes. It's a beautiful shot from Alex Stewart onto the front foot through the covers. Big chase, but it will be in vain. Well, Alex Stewart's been struggling to find. Uh, his touch, and here this is him at his best. Lovely fluent off drive, effortless. 
That's well played. Beautiful shot through the covers. Don't bother running for that. Right off the middle of the bat, right into the gap, and four all the way. I don't think you can afford to bowl half volleys out there. You've really got to get the ball into the track and get the ball to stand up and bounce a little bit. But if you're going to bowl in that sort of uh, area, really the best can just follow through and lean into it. And, of course, this outfield is quick enough considerably from 9 o'clock this morning. So it's not necessarily a good delivery. Wonderful shot, though. Got quite a tidy, relaxed action, Cairns. Yes. That's a good shot. Magnificently played by Heck. That's the one he loves. Just short outside off stump, and he's smashed it away. Just gave uh, Graham Heck too much room there. And Graham Heck just had enough time to really play it from the crease. Just a bit short of the length, a bit wide, and it's really nicely played. But Chris Cairns tends to use a change of pace a lot. He came out here just prior to Christmas on the tour of India and really developed the off-cutter. Well, he's got that away very well. That was short, and he's hit it for four. Well, Heck is beginning to turn it on. He plays that pull shot and the cut shot very well. That was a little bit short, and uh, he really did dispatch it well. Right off the meat of the bat for four down the square leg. Yes, that looked to be the slower ball again from Chris Kens. The off cut up, or the off break, really. And he just dragged it down just a little bit too short, and uh, Billy Graham Heck was able to swing through. Oh, he's hit that one over the top. Heck's beginning to look dangerous despite his problems. Well, he didn't quite middle that one. He's going to just uh, pull up inside the boundary, Danny Morrison chasing it, but they'll come back for three. New Zealand fielding has been very good. The throwing not always accurate. Oh, that's a nice shot. Larson dropping short and swung away beautifully by Hick for another boundary. Graham Hick will always go on to something that's pitched short. He's a very confident player, particularly in one-day cricket against the short pitch ball. And that's his favourite area. Mid-wicket. Weight first onto the front foot, then he rocks back and just lifts it over the infield. Good. Just away from the player and down to the fence for four runs. Struck it beautifully. A good attempt by the man at Weidman off Astle. And four runs, 71 for one. And it was really uh, when Cairns was dismissed that uh, the New Zealand innings went off the rails. Over the top goes Hick. Fieldsman coming round, but no chance. Beautifully struck. And the four runs. The key to this fabulous off drive is the width that the off spinner is bowled. If you see there, it's well outside off stump. It gives uh, Hick the freedom to swing those arms through the ball. Yes, Chris Harris, 16 wickets back in 1992, with an average of 21.37. Yeah. And has he got another one here? A caught and bowled. Yes, he has. The New Zealanders celebrate. Alex Stewart stands there. Another deliberation between the two umpires. They come together. The question here, has it carried back to the bowler? Harris is confident. And Stewart stands his ground. Well, I thought it looked out to me. It's the impression I got. Yeah, he's given him out. The man at square leg or stood at point. The umpire said, yes, it carried. And I think that was right. Nothing wrong with standing, but he just played through it. And I said before, a lot of the balls just don't quite come on to you. And it needed a wicket like that where the batsman gets himself out to get New Zealand back into the game. Very good innings by Alex Stewart of 34, England 100 for two. Graham Thorpe, the new batsman for England. He's gone down to the non-strikers end. That was the final ball of Chris Harris's over. Miss of the feet by Thorpe. The balloons away on the offside. Off the pad, 30 overs gone, 122 for two. We said he'd bowl straight, and he's gone through Graham Thorpe, and the breakthrough New Zealand dearly wanted. Well, I don't think it bounced too high, the ball, but I don't think he'd be too pleased with the shot either. He looked to be walking into it and working it through mid-wicket. The ball pitching on and seaming away, 
There it is, hitting off Stumley, working all the way around it, just walking into it. A little bit of a struggle for Graham Thorpe. That leaves England 123 for three. Neil Fear, brother, is the new batsman for England. He's on fielding in general terms has been uh, pretty alert. It's been very good today. That's a magnificent shot again from uh, Graham Heck. I mean, nonchalantly played away. Getting quite odd to pick that ball up out there. It's uh, going off colour a little bit. And that was a lovely flick of the wrists. And uh, it was four from the minute it hit the bat. That's one of the few times that Chris Harris has really drifted down the leg side. And in a full pitch delivery, Graham Heck was able to help it on its way. Well fielded, and this caused the mix up. This could be close. This will be out. He's got him. That's all over. The run out. I'll oh, give him out. Go on. I reckon that was out by miles. I can't understand why that requires a run out. Well, let's have a good look at it here, Tony, because this uh, result is so crucial to both sides because it's going to be Graham Hick that will be run out. If Michael Atherton hasn't made his ground. And there's the return. Is he short? He looks to be well short, Tony. And I think your call is absolutely right. That's a good one for New Zealand. Yes, he's out by about uh, a metre there, a long way back. What a dreadful mix-up. So, Hick has to make his uh, way back to the pavilion with Atherton. That is the end of that. Very, very disappointing from England's point of view. 85 of 101 balls outrun out in England, 144 for four. So, there's little Jack Russell. 32 matches in all, average of 20.82. And he's a fighter, especially when the going gets tough. Very unorthodox player. It's in the air, he should be out. And he is. Another big wicket for New Zealand as Gavin Larson strikes in his last over. And England lose their fifth. England making life very difficult for themselves once again. The fifth wicket goes down. Jack Russell trying to hit the ball over the top. Unorthodox in method. This time it doesn't work. Too much bottom hand in the stroke. The ball goes high in the air. Simple catch. And England are now in trouble. Danny Morrison took the catch for New Zealand. Jack Russell didn't last long today. Out for two. It's 151 for five. And the new man is uh, Craig White. And he comes in with the fall of the wicket of Jack Russell. There are the stats uh, for Craig White. And he really comes in at a very vital stage, Bob. It's always a pressure situation. England took seven runs off the previous over, which was getting up to something what they need. This Harris again. White goes after this. He's hit it beautifully. That's over the top. Six runs. Tremendous shot from Craig White. Beautiful clean hit from Craig White. He has opened the batting for England in one-day internationals. He opens his shoulders there against the medium pacer. And that's gone 20 rows back. Because of the lack of runs from the over, White's going to have to have a dip here. Two men out on the leg side boundary. That's going to be the favourite area for White. There's another one out at long on. Just two men inside the circle. Only five men allowed on the leg side. Goes after it. He's hit it very high. Cairns is waiting for it. And Cairns has it. White holes out, and England lose their sixth wicket. All credit to Shane Thompson. He's created like he had to have a go, and it very nearly carried for six. But good bowling. Cairns about eight metres in from the rope, and he makes no mistake. White's gone, England 180 for six. Dominic Cork is the new man in for England. It was the end of the 43rd over. 
and he will immediately be on strike. That's been changed with the ball in the air. It was a pretty big hit by White. He really went after it. It was the last ball of the over. And Chris Cairns had a long time to wait. He looked secure. Took it well. And there's the reaction. Oh, that's a handy shot. That's going for four. Very difficult to protect that part of the ground. And Fairbrother takes four. Danny Morrison will have to be philosophical about that. That's what happens. Perfectly intentional shot from Fairbrother. He moved outside leg stump, got Morrison to pitch the ball outside his off stump, and then that little fl flick through the slip area, there's no chance of third man cutting that off. strikes a big blow fair brothers out and further trouble for england the bowling change working for new zealand lee jamon calling on his most experienced bowler danny morrison and morrison's done the trick he's dismissed fair brother and he's dismissed him very emphatically the off stump goes back fair brothers on his way england 185 for seven New man out there for England is Darren Goff at 185 for seven, coming towards the end of over number 44. Oh, he's had a go at that one. It's going down the ground. This is all the way. This is going to be a six. Just what the doctor ordered. Way over the top of long on. Nicely struck down the ground. Well, that's all it needs from England's point of view is just get a couple of those in the bag. And that was certainly beautifully struck. Uh, Cork using his feet nicely and getting down to the pitch of the ball and right over long on it's probably gone about 10 rows back and if he can hit another couple of those then that game changes We're running around all over the crease and that's through the field for four beautiful strike wandering around the crease decided that to go and have a look at that there's some determination in those eyes Yes, well, Dominic Cork has certainly pumped up here. Just gave himself a bit of room and just moved outside the leg stump and really hit the ball on the up. I've got a feeling it's uh, all or nothing here. Oh, he's got him. Yes, he's nicked it. That's the end of that. That's a big wicket for the New Zealanders. Never look at them. They are going berserk out there. A little faint nick went screaming through to the captain and no mistake was made. Yes, well, it's well bowled by Dion Nash, and it's a good comeback, too, after being no balled. It was a marginal call as well, might I say. And he's come back and got a very valuable wicket here of Dominic Cork. Cork, again, looking to give himself a bit of room from the leg side to go through the offside, found the outside edge, and leads him on the captain. He's jubilant. Dion Nash, he's just as excited. So am I, Tony, to say the least. And New Zealand deserve to have England 210 for eight. He's hit that in the air down the ground it won't quite get there it's got to be out he's got him yes he's hit it down the ground a bit off that may just have carried the fence but there was a fielder in the way such a fine line between being a hero and a villain well chris ken certainly is the hero for new zealand and so is dion nash as peter martin goes trying to hit the ball to the boundary and that's what he had to do really he had to take the risk because uh, ones and twos were not quite enough for England. They had to get the odd boundary. Struck it quite well. Cairns did well. Moved nicely to his left there. And takes a well-judged catch. So that makes England nine wickets down for 222. So Richard Dillingworth is in the hot seat now. He's the new batsman. The number 11 for England. Goff has to go for this. Head up. And he's going to get one. He might even consider a second, but not really to Cairns. Not worth it. And so the last ball of the match will be bowled by Danny Morrison. And England at the moment a 12 runs short of victory. So New Zealand will take the points here in a minute bad. Last ball of the match. Ellingworth has a big heave and it goes through to the keeper and New Zealand have won. The opening match of the World's World Cup for 1996.
excellent performance by the New Zealanders who scored 239 for six England came up short and finished at 228 for the loss of nine jubilation amongst the New Zealanders and they've started the World Cup from their point of view in the right manner as the one spinner on a pitch that is uh, anticipated to take a bit of turn later in the day Shane Thompson comes in it's the only change of the New Zealand lineup from the match uh, that they played against Holland well Lee German won the toss and was very happy to put his side into the field and we're going to pick it up now with Pollock bowling to opener Craig Spearman and just a little movement away and a glance bound down the wicket from Spearman back at umpire Steve Randall but no response see the movement through the air here a little bit wide perhaps uh...